We have so much fun with them. This is 15 of our 20 grandchildren that, that came here today. And before we start, I start, I just want to wish to acknowledge our daughter Jennifer and our cute husband Paul Kerr, well, along with Ella, Nathan, and Alyssa, who are watching from St. Louis on Zoom. Their two older daughters, Emily and Lizzie, are here today. They just finished up their finals at BYU. We're grateful for all our local and nearly local children and grandchildren who are present today, as well as our siblings, our, our, my sweet mother-in-law, who has served three full-time missions with her husband, Floyd, who is watching now from the other side of the veil. Such good examples to us, um, as well as so many wonderful friends from the stake and, and ward that we cherish. There's even some of our childhood friends who are on Zoom from the East Coast and some in the room and some from the other side of the veil. And especially my church mission friends from the church headquarters mission that came and and have been giving me a lot of encouragement when I thought Singapore with cockroaches and snakes and Brother Tolman, who let me know that his brother, the mission president, found a five-foot snake in his house. I was like, okay, that, that's where I want to go. So as we serve this 18th month mission, we're going to miss two high school graduations, one college graduation, at least one mission call, and maybe even a wedding. My heart aches to be present, but remember that when the Lord was with his apostles at the at in Samaria, after he met the woman at the well, and many came to run to hear him, the Savior turns to his disciples and he says, the field is white, all ready to harvest, but the laborers are few. Whom shall I send, he asks. And as we learn from the pre-mortal council, there's only one appropriate answer to that question. When the Lord ever asks, whom shall I send? The only true answer is, here am I, send me. And that's true when we get a calling from the bishop or when we call to be the nursery leaders or when we're called as, I, when we left St. Louis, I thought, you know, Scott, this is great. I was able to serve, I'm middle age now, our kids are gone and I've been able to get all the way through my church service without being a nursery leader or a Cub Scout leader. <laughs> my first calling in this ward was a nursery leader. Loved it. Oh, wow. Why was I thinking that would be a problem? We just absolutely loved it. And when the church decided to retire the scouting program, but they had 18 more months, they called me to be the Cub Scout leader. Okay, so whom shall I send? We're all willing to go. So my assigned topic today is from Sister Spanis. Uh, uh, talk from General Conference. She's a member of the General Young Women's Presidency. She referenced when David went out to slay Goliath, he took five smooth stones with him. Now, he only needed one stone to accomplish his purpose that day. But she says these five stones could represent different things in our lives. The love of God, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowledge of my true identity, the stone of repentance, and the stone of access to God's power. She also suggested a sixth stone, which would be the stone of my testimony. While I find all of these stones are interactive, I've been impressed to speak about the stone of my access to God's power. So the first principle of the gospel is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to come to know that he exists, something about his character, his attributes, his perfections, and we have to have faith that he can make the difference. Not just the difference, he makes all the difference. So in the Pearl of Great Price, we see how the Lord step by step creates the earth. So let's focus on day two. This is the day when God the Father instructs Jehovah to separate the firmaments, a firmament in the heavens and a firmament on the earth, one to abide in the heavens where Heavenly Father reigns and one on the earth where we will come and be separated from our Father. This is the veil. This represents the veil. God is in his heaven. We have left his presence and we're sojourning here on the earth. So this veil, as we learn in Hebrews chapter 10, represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And the firmaments are water and water brings life. And God is in his heavens and he's going to rain down revelation and guide us while we're here on the short journey in mortality. So how does this work? Well, it's through Jesus Christ that we have access through our prayers to pierce the veil. 
and the, and through the Holy Ghost, he brings us answers. This veil is not sealed. It's not a steel door. When